Around the world, people are shocked at the scale of what China is building right now. We're not talking small upgrades or single projects. These are billion-dollar megastructures that rewrite the rules of engineering. Entire smart cities rising in just a few years, bridges taller than skyscrapers, railways slicing through glaciers and earthquake zones, and water systems that literally redirect rivers. While most countries are still debating blueprints, China is already delivering finished megaprojects at record speed. In this video, we break down the systems, the engineering, and the impact behind China's most ambitious projects, and why they're setting new global standards. Here's where it gets wild. On a flat stretch of Hebei Plain, China is building a $95 billion smart city called Xiong'an. Not a district, not a redevelopment zone, a city. Designed as a second capital hub to ease the load from Beijing, Xiong'an blends subway lines, high-speed rail, water systems, power grids, and 5G networks into one giant, hyper-coordinated ecosystem. It doesn't just lay roads, it lays thinking roads, digital arteries laced with sensors that read traffic in real time, tweak signals on the fly, and literally calculate the fastest all-green route for emergency vehicles. Picture a fire truck hitting a wall of green lights like it has VIP access to the entire grid. That's not sci-fi, that's operating now. And the timeline? Construction kicked off in the late 2010s and within seven years, boom, over 3,000 buildings. We're talking underground logistics, integrated utilities, and above-ground parks actually designed for human life, not just glass and steel photo ops. It's the difference between arguing whether to build and figuring out the smartest way to build, then iterating as you go. That bias for action is the through line here. If you want a completed showpiece, check out Xiong'an Station, Asia's largest high-speed railway station by some counts. 60,000 tons of steel. A two-year build cycle from December 2018 to December 2020. Two years for a structure that looks like the future landed and asked for a platform ticket. This isn't just a transit node, it's a mission statement. Build fast, build integrated, build for the next 50 years, not the last 50. But cities and stations are just chapter one. China also took on the problem that's haunted civilizations forever, water imbalance. Southern China has the water, the North doesn't. Most countries shrug and drill deeper wells. China launched the largest interbasin water transfer project in human history, the South to North Water Diversion. Try to visualize this. Over $120 billion, three main routes, thousands of kilometers of canals, tunnels, aqueducts, and pumping stations threading through eight provinces. The central route alone hops the Yellow River, slices through mountains, and lifts water in 13 cascading stages. It's like building a controlled inland river system, man-made tributaries feeding some of the most water-stressed megacities on Earth. And yes, this scale comes with trade-offs. Hundreds of thousands of people were relocated to protect watersheds and make way for reservoirs. That's massive. But today, more than 10 billion cubic meters of water move northward each year. Beijing, Tianjin, and dozens of cities aren't just quenching a drought, they've built redundancy into their future. The world's largest aqueduct system hums so high above the surface, it dodges pollution at ground level, and the entire corridor runs on automated controls that balance flows like a nationwide thermostat. For a country managing 1.4 billion people, that's not a nice to have. That's a lifeline. Now take a deep breath, because the terrain's about to go vertical. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway might be the single most punishing rail project on Earth. Almost 2,000 kilometers across, faults, glaciers, landslides, avalanche zones, and altitudes that make jet lag feel like a warm-up. Some tunnels need five years to punch through mountains that don't want to be punched. 4,000 meter elevations, seismic complexity, extreme temperatures. And yet, when it's fully complete, it slashes the trip from Chengdu to Lhasa from a grueling 36 hours to under 13. That's not just a railway, that's a statement that geography doesn't get the final say. You can see a pattern, right? 
It's speed, but not chaos. It's scale, but with system thinking. It's ambition, but with a playbook. China doesn't wait until every variable is nailed down. It starts, monitors, fixes, and accelerates. That feedback loop, policy execution paired with vertically integrated supply chains, compresses timelines the rest of the world can barely imagine. Does that make everything perfect? Number, environmental impact, resettlement, and long-term equity are real issues. But whatever your stance, the momentum is undeniable. Let's talk bridges because honestly, this is where things go from impressive to did we unlock a cheat code? Take the Huajiang Canyon Bridge in Guizhou. When it opens, it'll be among the highest bridge decks on the planet, about 2,051 feet above the canyon floor. That's taller than the Empire State Building, twice the Eiffel Tower, nine times the Golden Gate's deck height. Try wrapping your head around working at those elevations, installing main cables and trusses in high winds with dizzying exposure. The main span, over 4,650 feet. The steelwork, roughly 22,000 tons. The schedule, truss hoisting finished in two months, overall completion in about 42 months. And the price tag? Reportedly around $283 million. That's the kind of number that makes project managers elsewhere stare at their calendars and wonder if their calculators are broken. And because it's 2025, it's not just a bridge. It's a sensor platform. Smart cables monitor structural health in real time. If a bolt coughs, the bridge knows. This is how you build a national brand around engineering. Beauty, brutal difficulty, and data all playing together. Still not enough? Step into the Karst Mountains and meet fast the China Sky Eye, a radio telescope the size of 30 football fields tucked into a natural bowl tuned to whisper-level signals from the far edge of the universe. Its precision is surgical, 4,450 panels shifting in sync to track celestial targets, achieving millimeter-level accuracy on a structure the length of several city blocks. It's the kind of machine that lets us hunt for pulsars, map cosmic phenomena, and maybe, just maybe, catch a whiff of something out there saying hello. And then there's power. The Baihatan Hydropower Station, 16 million kilowatts of installed capacity, second only to three gorges. 16 turbines, each rated at 1 million kilowatts with runner components aligned to tolerances thinner than a human hair. It replaces tens of millions of tons of standard coal annually and cuts CO2 emissions by the triple digit millions. The underground caverns are so vast, you could park a squadron of Boeing 737s inside. It's clean energy at comic book scale, and it's running now. Now, I know someone's itching to comment, but I heard about a building collapse. What about quality? Look, no system of this size is flawless, and isolated failures do happen. But engineering credibility isn't built, or broken, on outliers. It's proven by the millions of passengers moved safely every day, the bridges that shrug off typhoons, the tunnels that don't leak, and the power stations that hum through peak demand. If you want a microcosm of the Chinese approach, check out Mini Sky City in Changsha. 57 stories, 200 meters tall, erected in 19 days using modular construction. Factory-made components, 90% prefabrication, three floors assembled per day at peak, designed for seismic resilience and fire safety. That's not cutting corners. That's cutting waste. Zoom out and you'll see this isn't just a domestic flex. The Mombasa-Nairobi Railway in Kenya transformed connectivity and freight reliability. In Indonesia, the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed line hit its design speed of 350 kilometers per hour and chopped travel time to around 40 minutes. Yes, some Belt and Road projects struggled, costs changed, COVID hit, terrain fought back. That's real life. But the broader point is this. China doesn't just export bridges and tracks, it exports execution. Logistics plus financing, plus engineering, plus training. A package. And let's settle a tricky narrative with some nuance. It's easy to dunk on slow west versus fast China. And yeah, the California high-speed rail saga is a meme at this point. Costs multiplying, 
timelines evaporating into the future. Meanwhile, China laid 40,000 plus kilometers of high-speed lines since 2008. But the why matters. Different political systems, environmental rules, land regimes, and civic processes lead to different speeds. That's not a moral judgment, it's a reality check. What's undeniable is that China's model, centralized planning, cradle-to-cradle -cradle industry coordination, a workforce scaled for velocity, lets it do things like rotate a 16,000-ton bridge span into place in under 90 minutes, or drop 80,000-ton immersed tunnel segments in the open ocean with tolerances you'd expect from a watchmaker. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is the poster child for that mindset. 55 kilometers across open water with a 6.7 kilometer immersed tube tunnel, segment joints aligned within mere millimeters despite tides, currents, and the constant heave of the sea. Engineers developed new seabed strengthening methods, built dynamic hydraulic systems to micro-adjust multi-story tall concrete boxes underwater, and stress-tested everything until it behaved. Typhoons, earthquakes, ship strikes, they designed for them. The claimed 120-year lifespan isn't a boast, it's an engineering goal backed with layers of data and redundancy. So what's the lesson for the rest of the world? Speed without systems is chaos. Systems without speed is stagnation. China's advantage is the fusion of both. Policy sets the target. Industry aligns the supply chain. Local teams iterate on site. Sensors and software close the loop. Rinse, repeat, scale. And yeah, there's pride here. Beijing Daxing International Airport, built in four years, moves 200,000 passengers a day from a terminal that looks like a sci-fi starfish scribbled by Zaha Hadid. The Shanghai Maglev still holds the crown for fastest commercial train. The Beijing Shanghai HSR was implemented in one colossal push. Bridges leap canyons where only mountain goats dared. Subways web cities that were villages two decades ago. This is the infrastructure era done at two times speed with two times ambition. But none of this exists in a vacuum. The global discourse around China's rise is heated. You'll hear snarky takes online. It won't last. It's just for show. It's CGI. And you'll also hear awe. Honestly, both reactions are human. We're watching a country iterate its way into mega-scale competence in real time, and that scrambles expectations. It's okay to be skeptical. It's also okay to be impressed. Here's my take. The story isn't China good, others bad. The story is that humanity has unlocked a playbook for building big, fast, and smart, and it's being updated daily. If you care about climate, you should care about hydropower precision and HVDC grids. If you care about equity, you should care about rail that moves people affordably across regions. If you care about resilience, you should care about smart bridges and modular hospitals that go from blueprint to doors open in a week. The question is no longer, can this be done? It's what model do we adopt, adapt, or reinvent to do our version safely, fairly, and fast? So what's next? Expect more inland deep water ports that cut logistics times. Expect more autonomous construction, digital twins of entire cities, and maintenance that happens before failures have a chance to form. Expect deserts turned into solar oceans, wind bases threaded into ultra-long distance transmission lines, and high altitude rail that makes geography feel like a software setting. And expect China to keep going global, sometimes stumbling, often learning, almost always accelerating. If that excites you, hit subscribe. If it scares you, hit subscribe. Either way, you don't want to watch this new infrastructure era from the sidelines. Drop a comment, which project blew your mind? The Huajiang Canyon Bridge, the South to North Diversion, FAST, or the Sichuan-Tibet Railway? And what should we cover next? China's pumped storage boom, the new megaports, or the underground Sponge City Revolution? Because here's the real headline, we're living through a pivot, not just in technology, but in the will to build. Some nations are still polishing their golden age trophies. China is busy making tomorrows, and whether you're a fan, a critic, or just infrastructure curious, the lesson is the same. 
speed, systems, and stubborn resolve are how you turn blueprints into reality, again and again. Bridge by bridge, rail by rail, city by city. If you learned something today or just love geeking out about mega engineering, tap that like button, share this with a friend who thinks tunnels are boring, and make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. The next project to bend your brain might already be halfway built.